Cleveland Cavaliers started the 2020-2021 season 3-1. And, and I just wanted to make a video explaining my thoughts, where I think this team is heading, and ultimately why I am, for one, genuinely surprised, but two, expecting the Cleveland Cavaliers to actually be headed in the right direction. So before I actually begin this video, it would mean a lot if you can subscribe to the channel. We're making daily quality NBA content. Subscribe, leave a drop rating so more people can view our content. Comment down below what you think, and let's get right to it. So, of course, the first thing we have to talk about is this backcourt of Colin Sexton and Darius Garland. And first thing I want to say is it looks like it's working really well. It looks like this is something that has a lot of potential, especially considering the fact that Colin Sexton is 22, Darius Garland is 21. And yes, I understand that it's only been four games, but there is a reason why I believe this backcourt can work. On Colin Sexton's side, when you watch him play, the game just looks slower. That's why I think this is sustainable. Colin Sexton looks like he's in control because a huge issue Colin Sexton had in the past that I thought he would actually never get over, the game just looked fast for him. The game looked chaotic. The game looked confusing for Colin Sexton. It looks like the game was controlling him, not him controlling the game, right? And this and, and this obviously frustrated a lot of his teammates. Like last year, Kevin Love got really mad when Sexton got caught up in the game, didn't look at the floor, didn't actually find the right play to make, like passing him the ball in that case. And that was just not just a source of frustration, but also really holding this team back. So I'm, I'm going to say it again. The game just looks so much slower for Colin Sexton. And that's really important as your primary ball handler because that not only gives him a better opportunity to score, it also gives others a way to actually run a better game plan and to secure more wins, right? And I understand he's shooting 54% from three right now. That's obviously not sustainable. It's only on 3.3 attempts. But from what I've seen, I'm going to keep on saying this, the game just looks slower for him. He's in control, and that is progression that I really never expected from a player like Colin Sexton. And then moving on to Darius Garland, like look, I know it's only three games, four games like I said, but he looks like a pretty good playmaker. Like a lot of his passes, I saw probably four or five passes, you know, like pretty basic point guard, shooting guard type passes. But some of them are like run off set plays. Some of them are run off the dribble, running, anticipating where his teammate will be. Like those more complicated passes. Like right now he's averaging 7.8, damn near eight assists. And that's something I really want to see from the Cavs because one of the most glaringly missing pieces of developing teams is they don't have playmakers. They don't have ball handlers to actually successfully not just run an offense, but put others, put other young pieces in the best position to succeed, right? So to have this type of playmaking come from Darius Garland is super encouraging along with his scoring. His scoring has been really effective so far. He's been shooting on 48-45 split. And also scoring 18.5 points a game, right? Like all of this is really, as I said, encouraging to see from a guy like Darius Garland, who I thought struggled to score the ball in his rookie year. So this tandem of Colin Sexton and Darius Garland is something that I definitely think is sustainable moving forward. Now, moving on beyond this backcourt duo, I want to talk about a surprising veteran, and that's Andre Drummond. Now, personally for me, I thought Andre Drummond was just going to check out this year. You know, he only accepted his player option because he wants to get paid. He got traded from Detroit to the Cavs, made it very clear that he wanted to stay in Detroit. And I really thought this was going to be a year where Andre Drummond kind of doesn't do anything, has a Kevin Love type season, chills around, collects money, and that's it. Doesn't actually do anything on a basketball court and so far that could have been anything further from the truth he's averaging 20 points a game 15 rebounds 2.8 steals 2.8 blocks he is an integral part of what the Cavs are doing right now 
And that's surprising. And beyond the fact that he's putting up numbers, one of the biggest critiques of Andre Drummond was he doesn't try. He just doesn't put in effort. Yet, if you watch the game, he is actually finally trying. It looks like he's on a team that he believes in with players that he actually likes playing with. And this is showing up all throughout not just the box score, but also what's happening on the court, right? Like those 2.8 steals only happen through effort. He's getting 3.5 assists, which means he's engaged in the game. He's finally taking that step up in terms of scoring. Like his efficiency can go up, but perhaps most importantly for someone who, like we know what we're getting from Andre Drummond. It's just, is he going to try? And this is the first time that we see he's actually trying. And that's really encouraging, which makes me believe that Andre Drummond might be a Cav Cavalier for the rest of his career. I actually have a feeling that he's going to re-sign. He's going to stay with this young core. And that's exciting for a team like the Cavaliers who need that let who need that veteran presence, who need that vocal leader in the locker room. And then moving on, I want to talk about Kevin Love. And this is something I find amazing. The Cavs are this successful. It looks like their future is heading in the right direction, even with $34 million of dead money in Kevin Love. So Kevin Love is playing like trash. He's only played two games, averaging 9.5 points, kind of not doing anything on the court. At this point, the Cavs just want to trade Kevin Love. I don't know if they're going to be able to. It's going to be really tough. I don't know who wants him. This is just an a relic of the old Cavaliers. They gotta pay for their bad decisions, not anything they can do. But number one, if they do manage to trade Kevin Love, that's an incredible win for the Cavs. Even if they get honestly nothing, at least they don't have the cap, cap hit anymore. And beyond that, you know, it looks like all they can really do is wait until his contract expires. Not a whole lot you can do. But even with Kevin Love weighing them down, they still have so many good pieces like a lot of critical role players like Larry Nance Jr. Larry Nance Jr. looks like, like he looks pretty good. He's been playing really well. He's been shooting at a good clip from three, averaging 8.8 .8 points a game, 2.8 steals. I like what I see from Larry Nance. I like what I'm seeing from Seti Osman. I'm high on Seti Osman. I really liked him as a player before. He's only 25 years of age. And he's averaging 13.3 points a game on pretty decent efficiency in 24 minutes. Seti Osman is a really nice rotation piece when he's engaged, when he's trying, and when he's actually making the right decisions. And then JaVale McGee. JaVale McGee, I'm a Lakers fan. I love JaVale. He's been playing amazing. Like I was like I watched that highlight of him taking it up the course, ball taking it up the court, ball handling, not not a shaft in a full moment and he dunks it, right? Like I think JaVale McGee is a really good piece on this on this Cavalier team to back up Andre Drummond. Oh shoot. I forgot about the rookie too, Isaac Okoro, right? Like offensively, he is not really anything to write home about. But Isaac Okoro like some epitomizes the player who has an impact that transcends the box score. Isaac Okoro already looks like he has the potential to be an all defensive player. And he does a lot of intangible things that don't show up in the box score. That's a huge reason why he was projected to go into the lottery because scouts understood that Okoro did the little things, did the things that might not necessarily be direct points, assists, or rebounds to put his team in the best position to succeed. Those are all things Isaac Okoro does and something I really... I'm looking forward to and watching him in the future. Of course, I want him to expand his offensive game, but this is all really encouraging stuff. And I'm on basketball reference right now. I forgot Thon Maker was on the team. I guess that's a nice young piece. They got Dante Exum. Like the rest of these guys don't really matter too much. But that core on the Cavs, like I really do think the Cavs are heading in the right direction right now. Now, what do I think is gonna happen? I personally don't think they'll make the playoffs. I think this hot start isn't sustainable. And, you know, maybe they'll get a 10th seed and vie for a playing tournament spot. But I definitely don't think 
they're going to get a top 8 seed. And here's the thing, that's okay for a couple reasons. Number one, they, they established who they want. They established Sexton, Garland, Okoro, and even Osman as people they want to build around. That's important. And number two, if there's a year to tank, this is the year. Imagine they add a guy in the draft, like one of the top prospects, like, I don't know, Jalen Green or Cade Cunningham or something, right? Like, if there's a time to be bad, now is the time to be bad. So, I never thought I would say this, but it looks like the Cavs are headed in the right direction. They might be able to lock up Andre Drummond long term. Sexton and Garland, that looks like a backcourt that can definitely go places, along with a lot of their complementary pieces. And we're just going to see what happens. I'm excited to see what the Cavs bring. I'm amazed that a LeBron-less Cav Cavaliers can do anything, but I'm happy for them. I like the Cavs, and we're going to see what happens.